Revolution. I'm affording myself some time to work on the EMP200 and uh, today I'm gonna show you more or less what it looks like, how it's been built and how we expect to uh, convert it. So the big theme with the EMP200 is cheap. <laughs> I'm afraid to say uh, the EMP200 is uh, definitely built down to a price. Compared to the Leaf, uh, it drives very uncomfortably, uh, at least in my opinion. Uh, the seating position is a bit weird. The steering rack seems to be shifted over a couple centimeters. But the biggest takeaway here is things like this. These wheels, they're all steel wheels. Now, I can imagine that is actually good for reliability because you can easily swap them out and it, you tend to, to hit curbs a lot with uh, delivery van like this. So, okay, that's okay. But uh, this also has drum brakes. And I would expect a heavy, heavier vehicle like this to actually go for the disc brakes and the leaf to have the drum brakes in the rear because well, drum brakes are pretty fady, uh, especially on hills. So yeah, kind of, kind of interesting. And here is the bane of our existence: leaf springs. You would expect the leaf to have, no. Sorry, that's a bad joke. These are uh, just big metal bars, essentially bendy metal bars made from spring steel uh, that do the actual suspension. Uh, there are arguably some shock absorbers, but uh, driving around in this thing empty, it just bounces around. It doesn't stick to the road at all. It's got horrible tires as well. So this is not uh, a van made for driving pleasure. Uh, I don't know why I am saying that, because that's very obvious. This is a utility van. It's been made for utility, but then still, I would have hoped for uh, quill springs and like actual suspension. At least a torsion bar, but not like this. Now the real reason that I'm ragging on this is because leaf springs are relatively hard to uh, get manufactured custom. And like we are hoping that the battery pack will actually just improve <laughs> how it uh, performs. Uh, because a little bit of load in these cars goes a long way to dampening out the uh, the, the bounciness of, uh, of a van. Uh, but if it gets really heavy, we do expect them to run into the bump stops here. Uh, if that happens, we do have to improve the springs. And uh, that's going to be very costly. Another consistent theme uh, with this car is room, space, air. Everything is really far apart. There is like an incredible amount of just nothing in this uh, in this vehicle. It's very clear that it, this had a uh, very large internal combustion engine. Uh, it got ripped out, and um, they just decided, well, we're gonna put it in a leaf drivetrain and just leave the rest of the car. Also interesting to see is that the rear wheel wells they're coated. They have this bitumen coating, and in the front. It is just bare plastic, so any uh, any like stones and debris picked up from the ground gets uh, jostled around in here, makes a lot of noise for the passengers and the, the driver, but uh, the cargo, it's whisper quiet. All right, and there is like, here's the battery, that's the front of the car, here's some air, there's just like all the space you can have. They could have put in like a twice as large battery and it would have easily fit, but they didn't. Oh well. All right, then with the covers off, uh, I've removed the connector, the high voltage connector and cable is exactly the same as the leaf, as is the battery heater, as is the uh, signal connector, although the pinout is slightly different, it seems. And then here is the battery cooling. 
uh, this goes to the HVAC circuit, but uh, internally there's just a heat exchanger. It's not actually, the cells are not directly touching a uh, water cooling block or anything. Also interesting to note is that there is no tunnel, so there's nothing going over the top. Well, there is these brake lines, but they come out here at the side and then go straight on. So uh, there's no room over the top, but obviously there is lots of room to lay cables down the side. I'm planning to route them to these plug holes, but unfortunately there is a plank over the top which we need to remove and it seems like it's glued so I'm gonna lower down the van and see if I can unstick that uh, a giant board. And that's 40 kilowatt hours in EMV 200. Also, it's raining. So this is a, uh, an underlayment board uh, with some foam beneath so that if any fluids leak in the cargo compartment, they will go underneath the uh, battery pack. Wow, it is really raining. The battery packs themselves will then be mounted with uh, little steel rails uh, to the wood and uh, there will be a piece of laminated wood on top. Now the, um, the packs are offset to the left to simulate a larger battery pack and we're gonna see how bad the, uh, the springs are uh, with this arrangement. That actually isn't bad at all. It is sitting about a centimeter low. I think we can get away with not using additional springs, but uh, we'll have to drive around for a bit to be sure. Uh, first things first though, I'm uh, going to make the splice. Here's an interesting defect of this generation apparently. Um, not sure if you can see that, but there is water in the cable. So this probably means that when I work this cable, uh, the braid inside is likely going to be very corroded. Well, okay, it's not that bad. Uh, what seems to happen is uh, there's the two power cables, then the braid, then there's some black tape to keep the braid on, and then they put this sheath uh, over top to, uh, to ensure that if the cable chafes against something, uh, you're not going to damage the sheath or the cables. Uh, the braid is stainless steel, apparently. Did not know that. And uh, here, this cable end is actually sealed, so inside the contacts, it's almost impossible to see on camera. It's all good. So there's, uh, there's no actual water ingress uh, inside here, but this is different from the leaf. Uh, we haven't encountered any water inside this uh, this cable yet on the leaves. And exchanging rain noises for sanding noises, I'm done with the splice. It's a pretty challenging uh, angle. And that there is a 2011 leaf VCM uh, with almost an identical pinout. There are very slight differences, but uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go solder. 
And well, there we go. That's the first bit of the extender pack installed. This is now officially a range extender. Well, I mean, the main power cables from the relay to this pack aren't installed yet. So almost officially in a range extender to ENV200. And the CAN bridge is installed as well. In fact, all the low voltage electronics are identical to any other leaf we have. And as you'll be able to see, it starts up just fine without any error messages. So apparently the standard leaf electronics just work on the EMV200. Obviously I will have to uh, adapt the um, range estimate and do some fine tuning of the firmware, but it seems to work. It seems to work just fine. And unfortunately that pretty much wraps it up for today, um, or for this week. <laughs> Uh, I'm out of time. I got to do other stuff this uh, Friday afternoon. Uh, this has taken all week, pretty much, uh, along with some other small things like uh, fixing a few more bugs in the leaf firmware. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is uh, the EMV200, partially modified. Uh, next week on Monday, I will be finishing up the entire battery pack and doing the initial range test, although... Um, I'm not looking forward to charging this at 3 kilowatts. It is completely quiet here because it is uh, half past six on Monday, but everything's in, everything's wired up, everything's bolted down. This bus now has 61 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. So <clears throat> the downside of uh, putting this in is that you have to completely <laughs> discharge everything. So now let's start the 20 hour process <laughs> of charging it. Yeah, it's a bit stupid. Uh, this, this bus really needs three phase charging now. Uh, I wonder if the owner is uh, willing to pay for that. <laughs> And now, we wait. It is done. It only took an overnight charge. And yes, it's fully charged, I checked. Actually, as it turns out, <clears throat> uh, this fan has a 6 kilo charger. So, uh, it actually only takes about 10 hours to charge it fully. Which is, like, acceptable. So, uh, no three-phase charging for him. Sorry. All right, and I just updated the firmware to reflect the extra capacity. <laughs> 432, that is a nice number, uh, kilometers. Uh, unfortunately, though, Leaf Spy doesn't like it. Uh, it doesn't report the actual capacity that I programmed, so... That's, uh, that's definitely something that's different between the EMV200 and the, um, and the LEAF. Uh, they, they do capacity differently. I also had to like modify my program to, uh, to change this on a different byte in a different CAM message. So uh, that was interesting. Also interesting is uh, everything went okay during charging. So it has charged for about 14 hours in total and it's completely charged full no errors no DTCs nothing at all so if this weren't uh, uh, like a copy of the leaf electronics pretty much I would have expected some problems something that worked differently but so far everything is nearly identical it is very 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 similar so uh, I think it's time to I guess put a cover on the batteries and start using it. And well, here we go. It is finished. It is actually finished. It is now Tuesday, uh, almost exactly a week after I begun uh, work on the EMV200. Uh, just made the lid. Uh, it's it's fairly sturdy. Uh, it's it doesn't quite fit yet, but this is uh, something that's not really important right now. 
we'll be taking it off and doing stuff in the battery box for the next like few weeks anyway so uh, that's something we'll worry about later uh, but it is finished and we can use the EMV200 we will be doing range tests we will be transporting batteries with it um, yeah we'll be doing all kinds of cool stuff maybe do a range test against the leaf that would be interesting so the lesson we learned from this is as it turns out the EMV200 is just a leaf uh, electric electrically uh, and as far as the, the CAN bus goes it's pretty much a leaf uh, it's a bit of a weird chimera between like the old leaf electronics and some new like features it's definitely got uh, lots of the features like the the eco button instead of the weird th way you do eco mode in the 2011 leaf uh, it's got the uh, six kilowatt charger it's got pretty much all of the features that the new leaf has but like the 2014 leaf has but uh, it's clearly got like all the wiring identical to the 2011 leaf so and of course something else that you'll want to know is how it sits on the springs and it seems to be okay uh, it sits like ever so slightly lower in the back than in the front but there's still well enough clearance uh, until the bump stops in the few uh, test drives that I've done uh, it hasn't felt bad at all actually it felt a little bit better <laughs> than the original uh, EMV 200 just because uh, it's got a little bit more weight and weight low down so it seems to steer a bit better <laughs> so for the time being we're going to try to keep this modification as it is uh, and not change the rear leaf springs and of course um, I just cannot resist calling this a 69 kilowatt hour EMV 200 uh, it is actually like if you use the Nissan metrics of only using uh, gross capacity of the batteries it is actually about like 69.7 kilowatt hours technically 70 but we'll call it 69 uh, it's about 62 63 kilowatt hours usable and we'll test that out as well so anyway hope you enjoyed this and I'm looking very much forward to making more videos about this uh, van See ya.